Moody Man is one of electronic music's most fascinating characters. He rarely speaks to the press and has been interviewed only a handful of times. He's an artist whose intentions and backstory are often impossible to read, yet his work is littered with deeply personal references. Not the way I do. Your needs, your wants, your love. Moody Man is effectively the alter ego of Kenny Dixon Jr., a Detroit Rose producer who's been releasing music since the early 90s. I just want you. His most notable interview, a 2010 discussion with RBMA, feels like a piece of overblown performance art. You gotta go home, you take a bath. A lot of people go home, you fuck your wife. A lot of people go home, you cut your grass. I go home and I fuck that motherfucker MPC all fucking night. But throughout his interviews, and perhaps most importantly, his music, a few common references emerge. This is shown on Jimmy D. Nickel, the opening track of his self-titled 2014 album. Here, he lists off a set of specific influences that make up his world. Black Potter, Martin Luther King, Bullard, Jimmy D. The Struggle. The things Moody Man mentions fit into a few categories. Classic soul and funk records, plus his friends and musical collaborators. Mojo. But perhaps the most common theme in Moody Man's music is Detroit. If it wasn't for Detroit, I wouldn't be the motherfucker I am today. You know, so I'm not leaving my baby. I'm going to stick with it. If that motherfucker fall down to the ground, well, y'all pray for me, because I'm going to fall with that motherfucker. Many artists represent the Motor City, but few make it such a constant facet of their work. By rooting so much of his music in his hometown, Moody Man bestows his work with a sense of place that feels authentic. There's also Kenny Dixon Jr.'s musical bloodline. A particular influence is his grandfather, who owned a jazz club called Jimmy D's Celebrity House, which Moody Man has referenced in his artwork and songs. This rich upbringing often elevates his sample-based music to another level. The Detroit radio DJ, the electrifying mojo, is also a recurring influence in Moody Man's work. Can you name some sort of DJs and producers maybe from when you were coming up that really had a massive influence? Mojo. I will say mojo. The electrifying mojo has dominated Detroit's radio waves after dark for almost two decades. Mojo has beamed down a blast of music ranging from Billie Holiday to the B-52s, from Bob Marley to the Rolling Stones, from Prince to Jimi Hendrix. Mojo, like Moody Man, is a huge Prince fan. Here's Mojo interviewing Prince after a performance at Detroit's Kobo Arena. Prince, uh, you've been the entertainer that... Uh has insisted on doing things one way, your way. <laughs> I work tired enough and kept my head straight. One day I get to do it on my own. Uh, that uh, has insisted on doing things one way, your way. Moody Man has a habit of manipulating samples in this way filling them with new meaning and context. He was the kind of uh, person you want to be around. On the day we lost the soul, he takes when samples Gaye taped from the radio in Detroit the day Marvin Gaye died to make a tribute. Marvin Gaye, a special tribute to Marvin. He then totally flips one of Marvin's most earnest moments, what's going on. Moody Man's parallels to Mojo can also be seen in his enigmatic persona. I've always just wanted to remain uh, a voice on the radio, a uh, face in the crowd, a figment of the imagination. Moody Man ran with this idea, even going to the extent of DJing and performing live behind sheets or wearing masks on stage. As he told Charles Peterson in 2007. People pay too much attention to the damn DJ, you know. The talent is sitting on the turntable. But this sometimes contradicts Moody Man's larger-than-life persona. Here he is performing at Deckmantle, serving drinks, loving life, and being as far away from the mysterious artist he occasionally can be. When Moody Man's not hiding in the shadows, 
The figure that emerges takes a large number of cues from black exploitation, the celebrated film style made famous by films like Superfly. In two of his five interviews, Moody Man suggests that the best way to understand him is through black exploitation. My story is the same old story. Watch any black exploitation uh, movie. It's also important for the vibe of his label, Mahogany Music. Just check out this promo video that uses a track from the cult black exploitation film Cleopatra Jones. This persona, which is inspired by fictitious gangster movies, is contrasted by Moody Man's powerful sense of authenticity. There's the fact that he lives in the center of Detroit rather than the suburbs. The fact he plays vinyl. The fact he makes his music with an MPC rather than a computer. This all adds up to this impression that Moody Man's style and presentation of house music is the real deal. Combine this with a larger-than-life and often contradictory persona, and you've got one of electronic music's most mesmerizing characters. In an age of instant accessibility, his air of mystery is just one of the reasons that he remains one of the most celebrated artists out there.